Hi everybody, welcome to Amy Nolte Music. Today I'm going to do something that I've been meaning to do for a long time, and it's to show you something that I think is just officially known as Amy's Jazz Bible. I think a couple of my students started calling it that because they realized how much they were referencing it. In fact, anybody that I ever teach, this is about the first thing I do for them. I sit down and I write them one of these because they're going to be referencing it all the time for years until they memorize it and understand how it works. So then, you know, throw it in the piano bench with your sheet music to the entertainer. <laughs> this is what it looks like. And if you'd like a printed out copy for yourself, you can click the card above my head, go to my website and pick it up there. In jazz, things are notated differently all the time. So in this jazz Bible, I lay out every way that chords can possibly be spelled and tell you what to do with them when you see them. So if you sit down and you wanna start playing Misty, and you run across a chord that you don't know how to voice or how to how to play the chord to on your piano, and we're talking about root list chords, then you've got something really quick to just pull out and reference. I'm gonna tell you all I'm tell I'm gonna tell you all about it. Here we go. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is to write this rule at the top. And that's that we're always going to put the third or the seventh on the bottom. It's a rule that I follow probably 90% of the time. And I'd like you to follow it for a long time until it becomes a habit. Someday you can break that rule. But for now, always the third on the bottom or always the seventh on the bottom. The first kind of chord to talk about are major chords. The ways to notate major chords are like this. Sometimes you just see a C, sometimes you'll see a C with a capital M, although that's really rare. Uh, you might see C M A, you might see C M A J, you might see any variation of these like C M A 7 or C M A J 7. You might also see C triangle, which is what I usually prefer to use. And although it's redundant, sometimes you might see a C triangle with a seven. You also might see sometimes C6 or C69. If you see this, it's oftentimes because if you were to play the natural seven or the major seven in your voicing, it would clash with the melody notes. That's the case in All of Me. The melody, all of me, might sound bad if it had a da, that note sticking in there, that major seventh note. So if you do see a C6 or a 6-9, you're going to want to leave out the major 7, and that's basically what that tells you. Now, all of these are the same to me, basically the same, except for these. But if I see any of these, I'm going to treat them the exact same way, and I'm probably going to do just about the exact same thing. Now, this is what I'm going to do for every chord. I'm going to tell you the vanilla or very, very common notes that you should be voicing over these chords, playing in your comping. For major chords, the first is the natural three, followed by the natural seven, the nine, and the 13. After I tell you the very common chord tones that you'll always be playing or almost always be playing, I'm going to put some notes in parentheses, and these are your sometimes notes. They're your color notes. You're, sometimes these are okay notes, and the one is one of those, actually the root. The five is also one of those. Now, some people might put the five over here. I don't. I think it's a little boring on a major chord, so I, I only add it sometimes. Another color note that you might have sometimes would be the sharp 11. Now, with any of these chords I'm going to give you, You've got some options. If you're just a beginner, you can start with threes and sevens. So every time you see a C major seven chord notated any of these types of ways, you just play the three and seven. And that's enough to get you by at the beginning. After you've mastered the threes and sevens of all of the types of chords that we're going to cover, then you start to add these other notes. And I have videos about that, about playing rootless voicings in closed position. You're going to take all of these notes and play them just as close together as possible. A situation where you might play the one or you might play the five is in a chord like this. 
where you're stacking fourths. That's a really killer situation where the one and the five is actually gonna sound just as nice and spicy as something like the sharp 11 because of the way that you build it up. In the case of a C6 or a C6-9, take out that major seven and add the five instead. That's what you'll do in that case. Next kind of chord, minor chords. Minor chords can also be notated lots of ways. And I'm sticking with the key of C just to keep things really easy for everybody. So here are the ways that C minor can be notated. You might see C little m. You might see C little m i, C little m i n. Or then you might see C minor seven or any variation thereof like this, just like that. Or maybe C m i n seven. The one I like to use is just C dash, it means the same thing to me. C dash seven, you might see sometimes, you might see C dash nine, you might see C dash 11 sometimes, or you know, C my 11 or C mine nine, something like that. Usually if you see a nine or an 11 written as one of the chord types of a minor chord, it's because that note figures prominently in the melody. You'll hear a nine really strongly in the melody over that C, C minor chord. The important notes to play over a minor chord are the flat three, the five. The five isn't as boring on a minor chord, it's more important. The flat seven and the nine. And the color tones are the one, the 11, sometimes the natural six, and sometimes the natural seven. I guess I should write a natural sign there. Now usually, if you're going to play these, they might be notated in the chord notation itself. So you might have C dash plus seven, or C dash six, or C M six, or C M I plus seven, something like that. If that's the case, you can add those notes, and for sure you're gonna add them in place of the flat seven. Dominant chords. Dominant chord has the natural three, and the flat seven. The important notes that you're always gonna to wanna to play are the natural three, the flat seven, the nine, and the 13. And I forgot, pretty much the only ways that you ever see dominant chords notated are like that. So sometimes you might see, instead of C7, you might see C9, or you might see C13. Or I'm gonna add this quick little sentence. Because sometimes you see alterations. You'll see C7 alt, or, or you'll see C7 sharp five, or C7 flat nine, or, or any, any combination. So because of that, our color tones over dominant chords are, well, sometimes the one, sometimes the five, sometimes the sharp 11, sometimes the flat 13, sometimes the flat five, now we do want to realize that the flat five is the same as the sharp 11. It just depends on how it's notated. If, if for instance, you see a C7 sharp 11, it probably means that there's an F sharp in the melody. Or if it's a G flat, then it, they'll probably call it a C7 flat five. Also sharp five. We want to realize too that the sharp five is the same thing as the flat 13. Or you could see a flat nine or a sharp nine. Really, you can do so many things with dominant chords. The next chord type that we'll talk about are diminished chords. Diminished chords are very simply notated, either like this or like this. And to jazz musicians, they mean the same thing. Even if you just see this, you're still gonna play this. And it's the, you know, just to reiterate, it's the same. Like, like if I see this, I'm probably just gonna play this, right? If I, if I see the 11, I might add the 11, but I'll have all of these notes. If I just see C minor, I'm gonna play this. Even though it doesn't tell me to play the seven, even though it doesn't tell me to play the nine, I'm going to play them anyway. That's what jazz players do. We make things more interesting. The important notes to play over a diminished chord are the flat three, the flat five, the double flatted seven, and the one. The one is okay with me all the time on diminished chords because it's kind of necessary to hear it for the movement of the chord. So the only thing I say to you about adding color tones to diminished chords is this, and I have a whole video about it called Diminished Chords, My Favorite Trick. 
Any one note added that is a whole step above any of these chord tones. So for instance, if we're playing C diminished or C, C diminished seventh, we could play E flat, G flat, A or B double flat, the one, that's a C, and then like we can take this one and on top we can play a whole step above it in addition to these four notes. So that in the end we've got E flat, G flat, A, C, and D. We can do the same thing with any one of these chord tones. So we can add an F because it's a whole step above this, or we can add an A flat because it's a whole step above this, or we can add a B because it's a whole step above this. So four notes plus one, that's my diminished rule, and it's really tasty. Now, now you don't need to do it. This is, this is plenty most of the time, but if you wanna make your chord totally extra tasty, add the whole step above. It's a really good, um, good trick. The next chord type to talk about is half diminished. Jazz players tend to say half diminished instead of minor seven flat five, but they mean the same thing. In fact, some people don't like the term half diminished because it's not really half diminished. It's like, uh, it's like two thirds diminished and then one third half diminished or something like that because the root notes are, well, they're actually the notes that are okay to play. So I'm gonna go ahead and write those, but We've got the flat three, the flat five, so a, a G flat, the flat seven, not the double flatted seven, that's where these differ, and then the one. Again, it's okay with me to play the one on a half diminished chord, but you can see that, you know, from one to flat three to flat five, that's, that's a diminished chord, but then this part is half diminished. So you can call it minor seven flat five, you can call it half diminished, but I'm calling it half diminished today. And there are really only a couple of ways to write these chords. This is how we write half diminished. Sometimes, although, I don't know, it's a little redundant. Some people throw in the seven. They mean the same thing, just like, you know, all the types of notations I'm using. Or you might see C minor seven, flat five. The color tones that I like to use, well, you know, to be honest, the only color tones I ever really use over half diminished chords are, I mean, some people use the flat nine. I usually don't. I. I usually use the natural nine. I think, I think it's a really tasty choice. And this is my go-to. Sometimes I'll throw in the 11 and you know, if I'm feeling extra spicy and I happen to think of it, I might throw in the flat 13. It's like playing the sharp nine before the sharp nine even happens. Like if you're playing a two, five, one in the key of B flat minor. The last kind of chord that I'll talk about is an augmented chord. We don't see these very often in jazz. But when we do see it, it usually just looks like this. That's about it. Scoot that up a little bit. So the notes to play over it are, are pretty simple. We've got the natural three, the sharp five. I like to add the flat seven because usually the, the augmented chord is acting in some capacity as a dominant chord. You wanna be careful if it's not, but, but I, I will put the flat seven as like one of my main notes for the C augmented chord because I usually use it. And really the only color tone that you're gonna to wanna to add for the augmented chord is the nine. All right, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done it yet and follow me on all the social medias for lots of important jazz discussion every day. Thanks again and I'll see you next time on Amy Nolte Music.